Good morning, students. Hello, everyone. See myself, Dipesh Shah, and I am taking uh, standard eleven subject statistics, chapter number third, measures of central tendency, and this is our lecture number four. Okay, so <clears throat> I hope you all complete your homework. That is in my last lecture, I gave you the homework of exercise 3.1, sum number 4 and 5 with method 6 and 7. That is, you have to use the direct method or you have to use a shortcut method. Okay, so some student asked me regarding the question number 5. There are some mistakes in there. Uh, the students get, uh, get uh, students are doing the mistakes in that so some uh, difficulties one that's why see it is just like as illustration number eight but here some difficulties uh, to some students that's why I am here doing that particular sum that is I am doing right now here the exercise 3.1 question number five that is your doubt sum okay so shall we start first exercise 3.1 question number 5 so first of all i am reading the question the following information is available on the talk time in minutes noted for 70 calls of a certain mobile phone user Find the mean talk time. Here the talk time in minutes is less than 4, then less than 8, then less than 12, then less than 16 and the less than 20. See here in illustration number 8, minimum weight is given that is 410 and the question start with below 420 then below 430 below 440 and so on so our first class is the starting point of first class is 410 it is given at that in that uh, example specifically right but now see in this exercise sum directly less than 4 the starting point of first is directly less than 4 and no information is given regarding the minimum or starting stage that is you can say lower class limit of first class is not given here but see it is logical that talk time is not in minus that is the talk time in minutes it not in minus so the minimum talk time is we have to assume that it is zero minute and the first data is for less than four minute that's why here i have to take or we have to take talk time or uh, that is the class in minutes is just like this The first class is 0 to 4. Why? Minimum minute is we have to assume or we can say that it is 0. The talk time is not in the minus. Right? So minimum talk time is just 0. And the first class is less than 4. The first information given here is less than 4. That's why we have to take our first class as 0 to 4. Now the next one is again then 4 to 8 then 8 to 12 and so on. It is just like 410 to 420, 422, 430, 432, 450 and so on. So here less than 4 that's why 0 to 4 then less than 8 that's why 4 to 8 then less than 12 that's why 8 to 12. Next one is less than 16 that is 12 to 16 and the next one is 16 to 20 that is less than 20 okay this one is your first this is the class and you can say that now it is a continuous group data 
see the information given in the textbook is not a continuous group data but now it become a continuous group data and the frequency that is number of call is given here that is your frequency it is 20 then 42 then 57 then 65 and then 70 see i am writing right i am writing correct frequency no here the frequency is not given here it is the cumulative uh, frequency is given see it is called a cumulative frequency whatever given in the below or less than uh, data the frequency is given is always a cumulative frequency this is not a regular frequency we have to subtract the previous one from the current and then we got the actual frequency okay so here these all are wrong the given frequency is not a regular frequency it is called a cumulative frequency see less than 20 uh, sorry first of all less than 4 the data that is frequency is 20 so you can write here 0 to 4 the number of call is 20 it's okay right now for next one 4 to 8 we have to do which procedure see what is the next frequency that is 42 see here i am writing not here right now in the example i am writing here that is 34 minus 14 that is 20 but I told you that you don't have to write in your fair book this explanation because it is just your it is just for your kind information you cannot write here as your uh, answer okay so here I am writing here as your working note not as your example regular example see 42 for 4 to 8 42 minus 20 that is previous one what is the difference of these two that is 22 here it is our regular frequency right now the next one is 57 so 4 8 to 12 57 is given minus previous one that is 42 that's why what is the difference see here the regular frequency is 15 okay now again the next one is 65 so here 65 minus previous one that is 57 so the frequency is 8 okay and in the last 70 minus 65 in the last 5 calls see this is our regular frequency if you are writing that 20, 42, 57, 65 and 70 as your frequency then your answer will be wrong always whenever I told you that in example number 8 whenever the data is given like below 20, below 40, below 4 whatever or less than 4, less than 8 as n then you have to subtract and you have to find out the original frequency because in that particular case cumulative frequency is given okay so you can find out by this way current minus previous current minus previous current minus previous current minus previous and this is just for your information this is just a working note you don't have to write this here you just have to write the original frequency here okay so now see always the total of the frequency is the last one in this case only in the below or less than case always the last one is your total frequency last data is 70 here make the total in your LC 
here the total is 70 okay now what is the next see we have to find out x bar then what is the formula for that x bar is equal to see here first of all you have to find out the mid value because here what is given here class is given here there is no any xi see there are two methods this one is sigma fi xi upon n or x bar is equal to a plus sigma fi di upon n into c right but i told you in my last lecture if your mid value is more than 100 or more than 80 or 100 then and then you will do you will take you have to take di method that is shortcut method otherwise it is easy to calculate this sum by regular or you can say direct method so here first of all i am taking the mid values that is your x So what is the mid value? How we find out? Lower class limit plus upper class limit that is 0 plus 4 divided by 2 that is the formula for mid value. 0 plus 4 that is 4. 4 divided by 2 the mid value for the first class is 2. Then see the class difference or class interval is again same here. 0 then 4 then 8 then 12 then 4, 16 so here 4 8 12 16 20 the class difference or class interval is same whenever it is same you just have to find out first mid value and then add class interval to find out the next mid value your class interval is 4 here 0 to 4 4 to 8 8 to 12 that's why here the class interval is 4 and you have to add 4 here so 6 then 4 10 then plus 4 14 and then plus 4 it is 18 so here here your mid value that is xi now see the xi value all the values of xi that is all the observations of xi is below 20 so you can use this one that is direct method see here there is no any specification regarding taking direct method or shortcut method but which one is easy to use see here whenever the data that is xi all the observations of xi is less than 100 or you can say less than 50 then you can use xi fi that is sigma fi xi upon n but whenever the observations are above 100 or about 1000 then you have to take sigma fi di and both and the method this shortcut method is easy to calculate at that time okay so there is no any specification regarding this but i am mean giving you here the specification when you have to take this or when you have to take this okay so keep in mind or if you don't remember these then write in your own words in your example book as a when we use this method or when we use this method okay so please write that now we will continue with this fixi only one thing is we have to find out here because in the direct method we want sigma fixi nothing else so multiplication of this See here 22 za that is 40, then 132, then 150, then 112, then 90. Sigma fi xi is equal to 524. See here, both the information is here now. 
Now erasing, I am erasing the second method because we are using the direct method. Sigma i phi x i. So, what is the answer? Put the value here. 524 divided by 70. I am writing 4 digit after point 7.4857. See here, what is your approximate answer is 7 point. See, you have to just write 2 digit after point. See, the 2 digit is 48. But you have to see that which one is the third digit. If the third digit is 5 or more than 5, then you have to add 1 into the on uh, in the second digit or if the third digit is less than five then you don't have anything you just write this two digit here third digit is five so we have to add one to the previous one that is 49 so your answer is 7.49 minutes Okay, so this one is the answer. Please write down this and you have to write one line again that thus the average or mean talk time of the particular person is 7.49 minutes. Okay, so first of all write down this. Now, see, we will continue with our next example that is on page number 76. Here, your doubt is solved. Okay, so now we will move forward to our next example. In the last lecture, we will complete up to illustration number 8. Now, we have to continue with illustration number 9. I am reading that particular question first. The distribution of annual sales tax of the different companies in a zone is given below. Find the mean sales tax, mean sales tax of these companies. See here, the data is given into class. That is here, you can say, from seeing the question, you can say it is a question of continuous group data. And you have to find out the, uh, you, you, can, you have to find out the mean by two methods that is direct method or by shortcut method first of all we are seeing the data <coughs> sell tax in thousand rupees 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 30 to 40 40 to 50 30 to 50 and 50 to 70 see here i am writing question first there is slight change in the question Read the question again and find out what is the change by yourself first. I will tell you what is the change in illustration number 9 other than illustration number it is same as illustration number 7 or not. See the difference and then I tell you the difference what is the difference between illustration number 7 and illustration number Nine. I am writing the question. Up to that, please read the question or compare the question of illustration number seven or illustration number and illustration number nine. Sell tax in thousand rupees. Then 20 to 30, 
Then see here, the next one is not 32, 40. The next one is 32, 50. So here, the data is misguiding you. If you are in hurry and you don't see the question carefully, don't read the question carefully and you just read 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, okay. Then up to up to 70. Okay, you are writing 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, then 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60, and 60 to 70. There are seven class, but here only five class is given because after 30, there is no 30 to 40, it is 30 to 50. And next one is not 50 to 60, it is 50 to 70. So here in the last two class, this one is the difference of uh, from illustration 7. Here in illustration number 7, all the observations, all, all the class interval are equal 2000 to 3000, 3000 to 4000 and so on. So the class interval in illustration number 7 is equal but here in illustration number 9, first three class interval is equal next two class interval is equal but in all you cannot say that class interval is equal of all class okay so here is the main difference now i'm writing the frequency number of companies that is your frequency Three, fourteen, thirty-two, forty, twenty-one, now make the total. It is 110. Okay. Now, see, first of all, this is the question. And what is the next point? We have to, first of all, find out the mean values. That is your XI. Here, FI is given. Now, we have to find out the mean values. That is your XI. See here, the class interval is not equal here. So, here we cannot find out the class interval in easiest way, whatever we are taking in previous examples or in previous exercise questions. See here, 0 to 10, 0 plus 10, that is 20, 10, 10 divided by 2, lower class limit plus upper class limit divided by 2 that is 10 divided by 2 is 5 here is our first mid value see the difference is here common so up to this we can add 10 because here the difference is 10 here also the difference is 10 so here 10 plus 20 divided by 2 30 divided by 2 that is 15 again the class is equal that's why we can add 10 that is 25 or we can find out by this way also 20 plus 30 divided by 2 that is 25 okay now see here the class interval is changed so we cannot add just we have to find out first 30 plus 50 do in your can see 30 plus 50 that is 80 80 divided by 2 that is 40 so here the class interval is changed that's why your mid value will also change because here 5, 15, 25. Now the mid value is not 35, not 45, it is 40. Now in the next one, 50 plus 70, that is 120. <coughs> 120 divided by 2, that is 60. So here your XI is there. And see, all the XIs are below 100. 
or you can say below 80 so here you can use the method one that is direct the method number six that is direct method or you can use the shortcut method you can use both of them see here in the textbook they are using shortcut method but for your information for your knowledge i am here taking the regular that is direct method okay so here for the direct method what is the formula x bar is equal to directly sigma fi xi upon n so here we have to just find out the fi xi because whenever the data is below 80 or below 100 you can use this one and it is also easy to calculate that's why i am using here this direct method now multiplication we have to use we can use Kelsey, that's why it is also easy to calculate 3 FISA, first of all 15, 15 into 14, 210, 25 into 32, 800, 40 into 40, 1600 and 60 into 21. 1260. So sigma fi xi in total it is 3870. 15 plus no, sorry, it is wrong. 15 plus 210 plus 800 plus 1600 and plus 1260 the answer is 3885 15 is remaining that's why 3870 is the answer but plus 15 that is 3875 is your regular or correct answer now put the value here sigma fi xi that is 3885 divided by what is your n that is 110 so what is the answer Thirty five point three one eight one. see this is the answer first of all you have to write I told you in my last uh, exercise sum you have to write only two but first of all you have to write all the digits but you can say all first four digits after point now you have to see you have to like uh, write like that that is the approximate value 35 point see here 3 1 but here the next third digit is more than 5 that's why we have to add 1 to the previous digit that is 1 plus 1 that is 2 32 so here your approximate answer or edge or mean is 35.32 and you have to write one line there thus mean sales tax paid by the by this company is mean sale tax paid by this company is 35.32 thousand rupees This is your final answer. So, again, first of all, write down this. And if you have any doubts, then WhatsApp me. I told you in my every lecture, please WhatsApp me if you have any doubts in your homework or as well as in the these examples. Okay. Now, see that. The next point is theory. Advantages and disadvantages of mean on page number 77. See, this is a uh, theory and it is also an important theory. But I told you in my first statistics lecture that theory here we are skipping the theory portion. We are doing that theory portion in our regular lecture because it is here right now it is very boring. Okay, so I am it is important, but 
here right now i am skipping that and we will discuss that point in our regular lecture so turn the page and see on page number 78 some important results about mean is given see it is in, it is also a theory point but it is important for the practical one that's why i am reading and i am explaining here right now so first of all the sum of first one some important results first result is the sum of the deviations of all the observations from mean is always zero read the is line again and again and keep in mind or you can see, uh, i want to say that underline that particular word sum of of deviations of all observations from mean or you can say sum of observ uh, sum of all observations uh, sum of deviations of observations taken from mean right here i am writing that sum of deviation taken from mean sum of deviation of all observations from mean that is sum of observation uh, deviation taken from mean is always zero what we solve that here the mean is x minus x bar and then it sigma see the word sum first of all what is of that here see sum of deviation taken from mean it is denoted by here i am writing it is denoted by sigma x minus x bar sum that is sigma deviation taken from mean that is all the observations are subtracted uh, sorry uh, all uh, mean is subtracted from all the observation deviation taken from mean means the subtract the mean that is x bar from all the observation and all the observation and sum of all the observations that is sum of deviation taken from mean sum of these is called sigma x minus x bar okay so here the deviation can be shown as xi minus x bar like this and hence sigma x minus x bar or you can say xi minus x bar all the observation is equal to 0 always see if see i am saying that 1 2 3 4 5 am giving a simple example here see which type of data it is it is an ungrouped data because frequency is not given here see that here what is the total 15 now what is the formula for x bar x bar is equal to sigma xi upon n because it is an ungrouped data so here 15 divided by 1 2 3 4 5 5 observations so n is equal to 5 so here x bar is equal to what 3 i am explaining this by giving this example data is given like this 1 2 3 4 5 5 total is sigma xi you can write here sigma xi is equal to 15 so now what is x bar 15 divided by 5 now it is 3 see here i want to find out x minus x bar i have to prove that xi minus x bar is equal to 0 that is sum of xi minus xr or you can say sum of deviation taken from mean is 0 or not 
I am proving that xi minus x bar. Xi means what? This one. This is your xi. All the observations. So here x is equal to one and x bar is equal to three. So one minus three. That's why here we can write minus two. Then two minus three. That's why we can write here minus one. Then three minus three. We can write here zero. Four minus three. The answer is one. And the five minus three. The answer is two. See the total. See the total. Plus two minus two cancel. Minus one plus one cancel. That's why here we can write sigma x minus x bar is equal to zero. See, I am taking an my example, and the answer is zero. So it is proved that in each and every sum, if you find out sigma x i minus x bar, it is always zero. But you have to keep in mind that the x bar value is always in integer. It is not in fraction. But if it is in fraction, then your answer of x i minus x bar is approximate, and it will not be zero. So if your x bar is integer, not in fraction, then x i minus x bar, uh, sum of x i minus x bar is always zero. Okay, so this one is the important one, and the uh, here they are giving their own example. I am taking my example. It's same. It will be proved that now sigma x minus x bar is equal to. Uh, it is proved that right. Sigma x minus x bar is equal to zero. Now the second point. See the second one. If each observations from x one, x two, x n is multiplied by a known zero constant that is b, and another constant a is added to it. we get a new set of observations we will denote these values by y1 y2 and yn so on where y1 is equal to b x1 plus a y2 is equal to b x2 plus a yn is equal to b x n plus a the mean of y1 y2 yn will be y bar is equal to sigma y upon n y1 plus y2 plus y So on y n divided by n. If we know the mean that is x bar, see here the main line. If we know the mean x bar, we can use the formula y bar is equal to b x bar plus a to find out y bar, which is also a mean of y. See here, I am explaining you by giving the example. See, if into the sum they ask that, or they say that first of all, x and y, two different observation, uh, two different observations, or two different set of observations, right? See, and they are interconnected like this. Y is equal to a plus b x. they are interconnected with each other all the observations of x and all the observations of y that is set of of all the observations of x and set of all the observation of y are interconnected with them is in this way what means of that see if x is equal to 1 2 3 4 and 5 right now I am adding a fixed value. That is, so first of all, I am multiplying a fixed value that is three. So what is the three x? Three, then six, then nine, then twelve, and then fifteen. I am multiplying all the observations of x with three, and I am writing here three x. What is the observations of three x? That is three. Then three twos are six. Three threes are nine. Three fours are twelve. Three fives are fifteen. Now 
I am adding a fixed amount to this again that is 5 plus 3x. See 3x is this one. We have to add 5 to all the observation. See 5 plus 3, 8, 11, then 14, then 17 and then 20. Okay, so here this is the x and now we can say it is a y. y is equal to 5 plus 3x. Right? Here y is equal to a plus bx. Here a is equal to, I am taking a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 3. I am taking an example. Now, they want to say that x bar what is your x bar first of all x bar sigma xi is equal to 15 so x bar is equal to sigma xi upon n that is 15 by 5 that is 3 x bar is 3 now make the total of y what is sigma y see this is x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 and the total of this is sigma xi now again here, here it is our y. That's why we can say y1, y2, y3, y4, y5. Right? And the total of these is 8 plus 11 plus 14 plus 17 plus 20. Here 17. What is your y bar? Again sigma y upon n when? We are taking x, then we are writing x bar is equal to sigma y, sigma x upon n. Here, whenever we are taking y bar, here we have to write y bar is equal to sigma y upon n. What is sigma y? Here it is 70. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 observations, that's why n is equal to 5. Answer is 14. So, in the last line, the main word, the main thing is the last line. See, I am reading the last line again. If we know x bar, that is mean of x, we know that here, that is 3. Then we can use this formula here. The formula is given y bar is equal to a plus b into x bar. For use, by using this formula, we can find out the value of y bar directly. Here, see, I am taking the example here. Here, y is equal to 5 plus 3x. It is given. The relation between x and y is here. Now, we know the x bar. And if x bar is equal to 3. The relation between this x and y is 5 plus 3x and x bar we know. x bar is given into the question. x bar is equal to what? 3. Then we can find out the y bar by this formula here. a is equal to what? 5. Then I am writing here a is equal to 5 plus b is equal to what? 3. Then I am writing here 3. And x bar is equal to what? It is given 3. So what is the answer? 5 plus 3 3 is 9. What is the answer? 14. See here. Same answer is there. Okay. So here I am proving that by giving the example that this formula is correct whenever the relation between x and y two different set of observation is given and if x bar is given then we can find out y bar by this formula. So it is the important one for the short sum. This is important one for the short sum and we will discuss it in the uh, regular example that is example of this type of example is given. So, I think so, it is example number, it is in the example number 39. 
that is the last example so we will discuss at that time again for that first of all write down all these things all the examples all uh, these examples first please write down this okay here your theory or you can say the some important results about the mean is over now the next one is exercise 3.1 see here in exercise 3.1 we complete first second third fourth and fifth five questions right now time for homework see your homework is in exercise 3.1 Question number 1 to 5 is over, 5th is your doubt sum and in this lecture we complete that, you is, I am solving your doubt. Now the next one is your homework that is question number 6 and question number 7. See, first of all I want to say something about these also because in this question 6, say, uh, uh, the data is same as in the question number Six, uh, illustration number 7 0 to 7, 7 to 14, 14 to 21, 21 to 28 and 28 to 35 first of all we have to find out uh, mid value frequency and class is given we have to find out the mid value and from the mid value see the mid value is in point see the first mid value find out the first mid value 0 plus 7 that is what 7 7 divided by 2 that is 3.5 so don't worry about that when your answer is in fraction is in point don't worry about that it will be happen because the data is changing the style of question is changing so don't worry about that you just have to add see the difference class interval is equal in all these data of exercise 3.1 question number 6 0 to 7 then 7 to 14 14 to 21 the class interval is 7 continuously that's why first uh, mid value is 3.5 and then you have to add 7 7 7 7 and you can get the next mid values okay so it is easy and you can do this by direct method because all the xi is less than 30 all the exercise is less than or 30 or 35 so you can use direct method FIXI also or you can use the shortcut method whatever you like you can use it but I want the answer and see the answer is given on the last pages so see first of all after doing the exercise you have to tally your answer you have to tally your answer because see on page number 307 the answer of exercise 3.1 is given all the sums that is 7 all 7 sums answer is given on access, uh, page number 307 whenever you complete see don't first see the answer first write your question by own way or you can calculate your uh, this question in rough book first and Tally the answer with the page number on the page number 307 given and then if it is correct then you have to write in your exercise book. So it is uh, easy to calculate. Now the seventh one. See the seventh one. The data 5 plus 14 then 15 to 24. See in each, uh, 6 sums 0 to 7 then 7 to 14. Upper class limit and lower class limit of First 2 is same 0 to 7 then 7 to 14 so first class is upper limit is the next class lower limit but here it is not same 5 to 14 14 to sorry 15 to 24 okay so don't worry about this you just have to find out the mid values from these and you have to do by your own way. This is some different but I am explaining you that different into my next lecture but you just have to do by normal ways as you are doing uh, uh, you are doing like 
this okay so 5 plus 14 that is 19 and 19 divided by 2 that is 9.5 is your first mid value and so on so class interval is again equal that's why you have to add the no sorry in the last there is no any equal in the class interval so you have to find out all the mid values because the class interval is changed after third that is fourth class interval is changed that's why you have to find out all the mid values by the formula that is lower class limit plus upper class limit divided by 2 and you have to complete the sum okay so here i am giving you the homework of exercise 3.1 and i am also explain this how to calculate this so please do your homework uh, regularly okay thank you class